song I love to sing since I have been redeemed of my Redeemer, Savior, King, since I have been redeemed. Good morning and welcome back to Bible Talks. I'm Chris Kramer with the Northside Church of Christ in Russellville, Kentucky. Again, we invite you to worship with us every Sunday morning at 9 o'clock and Wednesday evenings at 7 o'clock. And our building is located right next to Kentucky Fried Chicken. So if you're familiar with Russellville, you know where to find us. If not, find us at 689 North Main Street. And uh, come, bring your Bibles. Let's study God's Word together. And if we can encourage you with the Bible study throughout the week, let us know. We'd be happy to meet with you, uh, discuss Bible matters over the phone or a Zoom-type call. Uh, there are many ways to uh, meet and talk about God's Word. If you're not in our area, uh, reach out and let us know, because we'd be happy to point you in the right direction of a congregation and preachers. We know preachers all over the world. Uh, we can help you find somebody that will help you study God's Word so that you can understand uh, the truth. If you're just looking to ask questions, uh, pass those along. You can email us, northsidechurchofchrist at hotmail.com, and we'll be happy to engage in an email exchange with you in answering any questions that you might have. While you turn your Bibles to Proverbs chapter 23 this morning, uh, in case you're wondering, we did leave off on Proverbs 22, but we had discussed quite a bit of the subject matter of, of that chapter as a whole, uh, kind of jumping around in a few verses. So we thought we would pick up the pace a little bit so we can finish our Proverbs study in a timely manner uh, so that you don't you don't get bogged down as a, as a listener. Uh, so we're trying to consider that in our uh, the way that we approach uh, these things. We can read through them, but but you can read through them. And uh, so we're going to just look at it in a thematic style and kind of look at 23 as a whole if we can. And then we'll uh, be able to pick up the pace through the, the remaining chapters of the, the book of Proverbs. But while you're turning to Proverbs 23, I want to introduce once again, Nick Greenman. Good morning, Nick. Good morning, Chris. And good morning to everybody who is listening in on our program today. It's, it's always great to be able to open up God's word and study from it. And here we are again today getting to do just that. And so uh, while you're turning there, if you're also taking notes, jot down this address if you're in the Butler County area, 3628 Lovely Road. That is uh, Morgantown, Kentucky uh, as an address. And that'll get you if you put that in your GPS system. Uh, pretty close to our church built. Uh, we meet together uh, on Sunday mornings at 10 for a Bible study. We'll have a an hour of worship at 11. We'll come together again Sunday evening at 5 for another hour of worship. And then midweek Bible study is 7 p.m. on Wednesday nights at the same place. Uh, if you want to get in touch with me directly, my telephone number is 270-999-2600. And let's always be ready to study the Word of God. And if you want to study and learn more about who God is and what He has for us to do, then uh, don't hesitate, but get in touch with one of us. Let's study together. Okay. And uh, having turned to Proverbs 23, you might be listening on WRUS this morning, and we appreciate that. But we also have a video version of this program on our YouTube channel. So once again, as I always say, if you are uh, familiar with how to use the internet, just go ahead and look up Northside Church of Christ, Russellville, Kentucky. You'll find our website, which has links to our Facebook page and our YouTube channel, and you can contact us through those means as well. But go to YouTube and you can find a video version of this program uh, that you can refer to at any time. Proverbs 23 kind of comes out with a bang here. There's a pretty intense uh, discussion here. In regard to, um, again, a statement that I've made several times throughout this series of lessons, and that's, uh, you know, where we lay our treasure and where we put our focus on in regard to gaining riches in this life. So, Nick, if you want to start us off with verse one and following, uh, there's a whole section here from about verses one through eight uh, that cover this concern about overworking, you know, to be rich. What are your thoughts? Yeah. Uh, so beginning there, verse one, it says, when you sit down to eat with a ruler, consider carefully what is before you and put a knife to your throat. If you are a man given to appetite, do not desire his delicacies, for they are deceptive food. Do not overwork to be rich because of your own understanding cease. Will you set your eyes on that which is not? For riches certainly make themselves wings. They fly away like an eagle toward heaven. Do not eat the bread of a miser, nor desire his delicacies. 
For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, he says to you, but his heart is not with you. The morsel you have eaten, you will vomit up and waste your pleasant words. And, and you know, obviously there's a quite a bit to unpack here, but the number one standout for me is, of course, how if you're pursuing riches, you know, he says, don't overwork to be rich. I mean, because if you do get those riches, they're likely to grow wings and fly away. I mean, <laughs> I mean, if if you look at it, you know, how how many people just burn through their their uh, their fortunes? You know, it happens all the time. But if we focus and put our attention on on the true riches of life, uh, then then, of course, you know, that's going to be much more valuable. Uh, it's um, you know, as I see these little catchphrases all the time that uh, as an example, like even today, I saw a clip of somebody saying, you know, no one's going to be um, yeah, on, at your eulogy talking about how good you were at spreadsheets. <laughs> and, <laughs> and you know, it, and there's a, there's a lot of truth to that, right? Uh, we remember our memories with folks. We remember uh, the quality of character. Uh, and oftentimes, you know, it's, you know, their accomplishments in life, you know, they may be noteworthy uh, sometimes, but was that really what was important to the person? Uh, and or about the person. And so we need to really change our priorities a lot of times. Uh, if we seek to be rich, you know, the pursuit of money uh, for the love of money is the root of all evil. And, and you know, people who have pursued it have riddled themselves with many problems and, and, and strifes. And so uh, why even try? Why, why even be so consumed with that that you fail to see the more important things in life you know sacrificing your family for riches or or your spiritual life for your wealth and it's just not worth it yeah what we pursue in this life is usually what our lives become encumbered with um you know not that uh, there can't be uh you know good rich people in the world in fact you know paul the apostle tells the brethren you know the Use your riches for good. Uh, don't be greedy, you know, but but to share things like that. Uh, but in the case of the context of what we're talking about here it is certainly a situation where it will cost you in dealing with those. If they're looking to make a, you know, a buck, you might say, uh, it'll be at someone's expense. Um, usually there's a lot of, <laughs> for lack of a better word, carnage left along the way in regard to how a person obtains uh, a lot of their wealth. And I'm not saying that there isn't something to be said about good work. I mean, you have a lot of rich people in the scripture. Abraham was considered to be a rich man, you know, but we know we don't know him to be a person of this kind of character. But God is saying, what is your what is your purpose, you know, in this life? I mean, what is your what is your goal? You know, if you happen to obtain riches along the way, fine. Use them for the glory of God. But if that is your goal and all that you work for, then that's all you're going to get. And a lot of times people's riches are are their only riches. And it comes at the sacrifice of their families, uh, their spouses. It comes at the sacrifice of, uh, of you know, friendships. Because who are, the, who are the friendships that many rich people gain? You know, it's people that want their money. And when the money's gone, guess what? The friends are gone as well. Um, I yeah, hear they, this about people all the time that gain maybe a uh, an inheritance or something of that nature. Mm -hmm. Next thing you know, they've got family members coming out of the woodwork that they haven't seen in years, you know, because everybody wants a piece of the pie. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you take a look at those first few verses of this chapter, it, that may be exactly what the writer is hinting at here. You know, when you're sitting at a ruler's table eating his delicacies, you be careful about getting, you know, caught up in, in what you have before you. Because what is his true motives? <laughs> what is he trying to get out of you kind of thing? Mm -hmm. And and we can get, you know, just sucked into the pomp and circumstance of being in celebrities, you know, around celebrities that we begin to make fools of ourselves. We begin to uh, act ridiculous. We begin to dedicate things that we probably should be a little more wiser on. We become gluttons. You know, uh, compromising and, with the world. Yes, yes. And so there's a lot of warning there in that in that first little bit in regards to, you know, a when you're sitting at the table, put a throat against, put a knife against your throat. <laughs> you know, you know, don't be so gullible. Don't be if so these are the things that you're gonna desire, then those will mm -hmm. be the ways that you obtain them. And they're not mm -hmm. the right ways. I mean, you and I were talking earlier, Nick, 
Uh, we enjoy movies and entertainment, things like that. But there's a lot going on in Hollywood today, that, and it has been for many years. We're, right. we're not clouded to the fact that it is one of the most ungodliest, you know, places. And, you know, especially in regard to um, what you see going on in the world and the uh, the preeminence that, you know, a movie star has or mm -hmm. a, a singer might have. Uh, ungodly people, uh, even in the sports industry, you know, things like this. And uh, there are some religious, you know, people trying to make headway, you know, and bringing about some entertainment and all. And we've come to a point in our lives where we got to make a decision. You know, what yeah. are we going to subject ourselves to? Uh, what are we going to bring into our homes? And these people are about the money. They are about the pride and, and prestige of what they do. And, um, you know, it's like it, it's not a lifestyle that's conducive to living for God. You look at verse eight again when it says, you waste your pleasant words. And, and you know, that, that you're trying to butter up somebody that already thinks a lot of themselves because <laughs> there's a lot of narcissism in, you know, in the rich world. Um, you know, they do things for their pleasure, uh, a lot of hedonism. Uh, and it's not for anyone else's pleasure. And it's certainly not for God's pleasure. And with that in mind, um, you know, we, we need to be very careful. We always tend to appreciate the rich who act humble, uh, who present themselves in a humble way. And I've known people like that uh, who were successful in life and the Lord did bless them, but they gave credit to God and they gave back to God. And, um, you know, there are, there are some good, good people out there, but that doesn't make them better than anybody else. Jesus said about the widow and her two mites, she's given more than all these people with big money, you know, because mm -hmm. she's given of all that she has. And, you know, would the rich man do that? <laughs> Absolutely not. No. You know, like to see him give all that he has, you know, but um, there, there's a lot of things, you know, and it's easy to say from a perspective of a person that doesn't have money. But, you know, uh, it's not about putting down the rich or a good work ethic or even striving for success in this life. But what is our goal? What are we trying to accomplish? And you see this in the world. I mean. Oh, wow. There's just the movie industry is booming with money. Um, the pornography industry. Oh, ridiculous. It's ridiculous. The amount of people that are involved in that sinful lifestyle. Uh, you can see a lot of this kind of thing on social media groups. I know I'm not on TikTok, but I know about it. I mean, everybody knows about it. You hear about it. You hear what people are doing out there. There are some other groups that are out there that are promoting sexual content um and they will say oh yeah we're making a lot of money doing these things and they all have this particular look about them they have this particular sway and attitude a lot of young people that are just so into themselves it's a very narcissistic type environment to be in mm -hmm. and you know if you're looking to be an internet star um you might want to question your character <laughs> First off, <laughs> yeah, because the rest of us certainly are. <laughs> it, it it's a time to be wise, uh, very much so. And but you know, people don't want to hear wisdom. Uh, and and there's the next verse uh, is counsel to those who have wisdom. You know, sometimes just people are not going to listen, and you got to be be careful about how much time you devote to a certain person or or whatnot. And yeah. and we sp we spent some time on that on ARE this past week. Uh, in regards to at what point do we say it's time for us to move on and 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 so you know it's there's a time where you got to brush the dust off your feet to move on to the next place uh and we got to start using some wisdom uh people are not wanting to listen to the truth then you have to say all right well uh you know maybe next time but i gotta move on and so in verse 9 it says do not speak in the hearing of a fool for he will despise the wisdom of your words uh, I mean, it's a consistent theme throughout Proverbs. It is very consistent. You know, it's always the, the the wise version of the fool, mm -hmm. and you know we waste our time with foolish things. Uh, wisdom, the, the more put it this way, the more we get involved with foolish things, the less and less wisdom appeals to us. And when yeah. the wise come along, we don't want to hear it because, oh, well, you know, they don't know what they're talking about, you know, kind of thing. And we get that a lot, you know, in the church. We get that a lot as preachers. Uh, there used to be a time when there was a little bit more respect for people that taught God's word. And those days are gone. 
I mean, and people don't respect the people who taught God's word. All people want to do is debate them. Mm -hmm. uh, if you are a preacher or teacher of the gospel, uh, you just have a target on your back for people to want to just point the finger at you and say, okay, you know, you, you, you proved to me this, you proved to me that. Uh, people come into religion in a very, um, oh, there's a word I'm looking for. They take the negative view, a very critical view of, uh, of faith and, um, and, and the world. And, you know, we think we've become so smart in the world. Mm -hmm. You know, some of the smartest people in the world are the dumbest people when it comes to faith and love and the understanding of God's word and what God has done through his son, Jesus Christ. Atheists think they're the smartest people on the earth. Yeah. And you know how well, I feel about it. You know, the, the idea of true justice mm -hmm. and righteousness is completely perverted yeah. when society is defining that. Uh, and, and they have this uh, uncanny ability to make things sound good, but it's actually evil. And, and Isaiah, I believe, said, woe to mm -hmm. those who call evil good and good evil. And, and looking at the next couple of verses, verses 10 and 11, it says, do not remove the ancient landmark, nor enter the fields of the fatherless, for their Redeemer is mighty. He will plead their cause against you. This is the idea of justice, right? You know, you know, trying to, you know, by secrecy or, or theft or, uh, you know, trying to move the landmarks, move the borderline to say, well, my property is actually this much bigger than, <laughs> than you thought it was. You know, they're, they're trying to be deceptive uh, and, and trying to be unjust. And there's a judgment day coming. And it says there in verse 11, their redeemer is mighty. He will plead their cause against you. When people are persecuted for righteousness sake, because they're standing up for what God has said and, and society is coming down hard on some folks, right? God is going to be the redeemer. And, and here's, there's, here's an interesting study I had. That word redeemer is the word avenger. When you read it in, in numbers talking about the avenger of blood, mm -hmm. the redeemer and an avenger are the exact same Hebrew word. And so when, when it says I have a redeemer, you know, there's a, there's a bite to that bark and mm -hmm. we need to respect that. Uh, and, and, those of us who are of the faith can be humbled by it and, and comforted by it. Uh, but those who are going to be moving those landmarks, trying to change the narrative and trying to redefine what good is and then bring a hammer down on the faithful, yeah. there's a judgment coming. Well, it's like the old saying goes when it comes to landmarks, you know, we, we need to draw a line in the sand. You know, mm -hmm. there's a border in which we need to stay on the right side of. Um, Look at the next few verses. This is all about being trained and disciplined mm -hmm. with the right things of this life. Right. Uh, verse 12, apply your heart to instruction and your ears to words of knowledge. Do not withhold correction from a child. For if you beat him with a rod, he will not die. He shall beat him with a rod and deliver his soul from hell. And I know in our society today, that sounds like, you know, an over, <laughs> I mean, people say, oh, that, that's child abuse or whatever. We're just talking about discipline here. No, he's not talking about, uh, you know, discipline that's unnecessary. He's not talking about lashing out in an unnecessary way. Um, and certainly when we talk about correction, instruction, going back to verse 12, uh, when we think about discipline, discipline takes on various forms. N number one, yes, correction is something that's needed. We need to course correct through life. You need to tell your child the direction they need to go when they're going the wrong way. You need to stop them from going that way. Uh, discipline is also a matter of teaching and setting a standard. Again, drawing that line, drawing the landmark. We don't go over this line. I mean, I'm sorry to use, <laughs> you know, movie examples, but, you know, The Lion King. Maybe some of y'all remember that. <laughs> I mean, the father, you know, the head lion, he's, he's telling his son, uh, you know, you see out there, <laughs> you don't go there. And as soon as the kid goes out there, guess what happens? All kinds of trouble ensues. The father ends up losing his life. And that's the Lion King. <laughs> that's a cartoon. But yet we learn these principles in life of the ne necessity of obedience and learning to live within our boundaries. And if we apply our heart to instruction, I don't have to go out there and experience the foolishness of this world to appreciate the goodness of God. 
And we always love people and their stories. Oh, yeah, I came from a rough background. And yeah, this happened to me and that happened to me. And the Lord redeemed me. And those are great stories. Don't think that I'm mocking them. I am not. Because redemption stories are just the best. I mean, you know, if, if we can if we can see a guy like Darth Vader redeemed, that makes us happy. That makes a good movie, right? But what I'm trying to say here is that you don't have to go that route to find redemption in the Lord. You, you know, you can be a good child and grow up without having committed these immoralities along the way. And you can live an innocent life. Not that you should be arrogant about them, but wouldn't it be nice? I mean, it's a I great think, story too, right? Huh? It'd be a great story too to hear, hear oh, someone like, yeah, I, think I was able to say story. no. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I, I've supported some of my, you know, people, friends and people that I've known in the past uh, by going with them to things like, you know, their Alcoholics Anonymous meetings and things like that. I always felt kind of uncomfortable because I know it's for a particular group and I, I, you know, I didn't want to barge in on something that I wasn't really a part of, but I wanted to be there to support people. So I would go, I would listen to their stories and things like that. I'm not like, well, well these are good. And, and I see where these people need that camaraderie with people that have been put into the same kind of position. But there's also the side of me that says, why not also go to the person that's never done that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Jesus never sinned yet. He became our savior. You know, there's, there's, there's something to be said about going to somebody that's been successful in this life with their morality, with their walk with God and saying, how did you do that? And how can I follow your steps? But in today's society, it's like, no, we need somebody that understands us. I need somebody that's been down the same path that I did. You know, I need somebody mm -hmm. that, that, uh, you know, has been through my troubles. And why do they do that? Why do they do that? I, I don't know. Is it, well, is it for their the, own the comfort? The one person that could understand what they went through is Solomon. I mean, he didn't hold anything back. He indulged every desire he ever had. Well, that's and what we're reading and right what here. is he telling us right now? He's like, don't do it. Yeah, <laughs> he's like, that's exactly do what he's saying. <laughs> like at the he's very saying, end. Learn from my mistakes. You know, <laughs> yeah. I mean, we as parents tell that to our children all the time. And you brought yeah, up, I mean, we never find anybody perfect in this life. Yeah, you brought up the Alcoholics Anonymous, but look at the last few verses. And I know we're running out of time. So, yeah, and this is where I really wanted to go with this to book in this study, because when you look at some of the problems at the beginning, you see the end of this proverb uh, being almost some of the reason why. Yeah. Okay. This he is says, a big practice in our world today. Go ahead, Nick, and yeah, let's wrap up our verse thoughts. 29, it says, who has woe, who has sorrow, who has contentions, who has complaints, who has wounds without cause, who has redness of eyes, those who linger long at the wine, those who go in search of mixed wine. Do not look on the wine when it is red, when it sparkles in the cup, when it uh, swirls around smoothly. So at the last, it bites like a serpent and stings like a viper. Your eyes will see strange things and your heart will utter perverse things. Yes, you will be like one who lies down in the midst of the sea or like one who lies at the top of the mast saying, They have struck me, but I was not hurt. They have beaten me, but I did not feel it. When shall I awake? that I may seek another drink. Let me add one other thing to that. Going back to verses 19 through 21. Hear my son and be wise and guide your heart in the way. Do not mix with wine bibbers or with gluttonous eaters of meat for the drunkard and the glutton will come to poverty and drowsiness will clothe the man with rags. There are a lot of people that, as I said before, they have that story. And a lot of them come from that kind of background that no matter what type of sins a relationship they had that was apart from God, usually it's things like this that people turn to. If you don't have God to turn to, more than likely people are going to turn to drink. They're going to turn to gluttony. They're going to turn to the things that give them immediate satisfaction in this life. And there's not one positive thing that's said about it here. In fact, people that want to promote social drinking, you know, and, 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 you know, give all kinds of biblical reasons why they should be allowed to drink. Don't listen to any of that foolishness it is foolishness. And, uh, you want to challenge me on it? Let's do it. Let's have a study. Let's have a true blue Bible study over the issue of drinking. And if the, in, at the end of it, you don't see what the Bible has to say, I don't know what to do for you, but yeah. I so want to end the study. Don't even look at it. 
Solomon is, you know, he says, don't even look at it. <laughs> don't look at the wine when it's red, when it sparkles in the cup. Yeah. yeah. Because it uh, will bite you. It yeah. will bite you. He compares it to a harlotry versus 27 and 28. I mean, this is how they get you. This is how Satan gets you, okay? We've often heard that, right? But hey, let's let's end on a positive note here. And I, we're jumping around a little bit. I want to go back to verse 22 through 26. Uh, because here it goes back to the point that I was making a few moments ago. Let's strive to be the people that don't have these problems, that don't have to overcome. Verse 22 says, Listen to your father who begot you. Do not despise your mother when she is old. Buy the truth and do not sell it. Also wisdom and instruction and an understanding. The father of the righteous will greatly rejoice. And he who begets a wise child will delight in him. Let your father and your mother be glad. And let her who bore you rejoice. My son, give me your heart. And let your eyes observe my ways. I don't think I need to over explain that to anybody, do you? No, <laughs> I mean, it's beautiful. You talk about something that speaks for itself. So we're going to end on that note today. Sorry that we're out of time, but uh, look at these things. Obviously the things what not to do, but what we should do. And uh, let's follow the good advice. As Proverbs teaches us, it'll be teaching us this next week as we get into chapter 24. I know some things are repetitious, but we'll try to focus on particular themes throughout the remaining chapters so we can kind of focus on how to apply these lessons to our lives. We want to thank everybody for joining us today. And we look forward to seeing you next time on Bible Talks. Since I have been redeemed, spirits I have been redeemed. Since I have been redeemed, I will glory in his name. Since I have been redeemed, spirits I have been redeemed. I will glory in my Savior's name.